Hey everybody, welcome to Cast. I'm your host Matt. And I'm Tyler. Welcome Tyler, welcome everybody to the Linux Cast. We record this live every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time or, you know, thereabouts. Um, we're not actually too far behind t- today, which is pretty good, I think. So uh, if you want to join us live, you can do so at uh, youtube.com slash linuxcast. Make sure you subscribe and all that stuff. So uh, look at me getting the housekeeping stuff right out the way. We talk about Linuxy things, and we're going to do... We have a awesome topic that should not really piss anybody off, but we should... I, I chose this topic because I thought we could have some really good fun with it to try to make our own perfect distro. What would the perfect distro actually look like if we could just pull parts off from every distro that exists and shove them all into one ISO? What would that distro actually look like? It should be fun, especially because we know at least one person on this podcast is going to try to make it all nicks like and the other guy is going <laughs> to ma- make the logo look like a fucking chameleon we know that that's going to happen <laughs> uh, you're so, not wrong <laughs> so it, it, we should have some fun with it but before we do we have a couple things to take care of as we usually do but, but first if you're listening to the audio version i'm just going to call this out first because i would really like you to go leave us a review because i'd really help the podcast uh, on Apple Podcasts. So if, if you're on Apple Podcasts, hit the, those stars and give us a, a few stars. It, it costs nothing. Uh, so thank you for doing that. And uh, now we can jump into what we've done this week in open source. So Tyler, what next things have you been up to <laughs> this week? <laughs> well, if you've got me all big, I'll go ahead and switch over to my desktop because one of the things that I've added, I've got the podcast running in the background. I'll switch that just so it doesn't confuse anybody or you know be distracting but i made with d-dub's help or donald in chat he helped me use yad to make a nice keyboard shortcut menu it's still broken and saying oh there we go nope i don't know it doesn't show the right command for this one down here but all the other key bindings it'll show you the actual command and describe what the key binding is for my hyperland set up i've added like a numbered version of my hyperland rice i'm also working on a waybar implementation uh, using a lot of these like animated css colors for stuff so that's fun that'll be that'll be out in a day or so and then i also worked a lot on my website I improved a lot, all of the images I converted to AVIF format. So they're smaller and the website should, you know, load faster because of that. And I also wrote an explanation of my flake and everything over there. And I also talk about it a bit in, in this post, but I'm moving, I'm in the process of moving all of my documentation for my config, my NixOS config over to my website so it'll look better and also my website has a search function so you can search through and it'll bring up any specific pages of my wiki based off your search query so that will hopefully make things much better for my documentation and for just allowing people to use my config so i've really just been doing a lot of stuff like that i'm also implementing w lockout right now So you'll have a nice like kind of power like menu where you can log out, do different stuff, shut down the system, reboot, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing with my config. I haven't spent a single minute in Nix this week at all. Uh, Even though I'm in the middle of that long-term review, I haven't had any interest in (laughs) using it. Part of it was because of other things going on, but I I just needed a break from it. I'll I'll get back back into it eventually. Well, I haven't spent any time in Nix, but I have watched a couple more tutorials on Flakes, and I'm compiling knowledge on it. To I'm fine. I'm getting there. I'm much more closer this week than I was last week to understanding what the hell is going on. So we're making progress. Um, well, I don't think. That, I also I don't think put that, out a video today about a simple explanation of Home Manager. So hopefully it helps you. I haven't got into home manager. I'm still stuck on flakes. I don't think that there's actually a. Pro- I mean, there's the problem of you know slightly different explanations over what flakes is, but really my brain is just too slow because it's so weird. 
like it's more different than what I expected it to be. And I don't know. It's just my brain, not just you ever, you ever have like a blockage where you just can't understand something, even if it's simple. It's kind of like yeah. me in, in, in flakes. I just, I just don't get it yet. I'm working on it though. Anyway. So I have this week was a very not great week for me in terms of computing, not necessarily things, things going wrong with my distro or anything. So Jake from the, my Discord helped, along with several other people, to make a way to install the TKG kernel on OpenSUSE. And while that was actually two weeks ago I installed that, I've been using that for a little while and uh, ended up having to then not use it after it, for whatever reason, broke the ability for my Elecom Huge to actually work, which I don't under, nobody seems to understand because the mouse works fine, the, but the Huge didn't. So I ended up going back to the regular kernel and then OpenSUSE's Grub menu for whatever reason would not let me change like back to the default kernel as the default and kept loading me into the TKG. So I did a uh, Butterfest uh, a zipper snapback or a, a zipper, not a zipper, snapper uh, rollback to get back to before I installed the kernel. And what that meant was that I had to rebuild Hyperland. And I was like, well, you know, I might as well just go ahead and rebuild Hyperland as the latest commit instead of what I, I knew worked, which was a mistake. <laughs> so uh, I, I should have I should have just built the one that I had already pulled and I knew worked just fine. But I didn't. I did a git pull and, 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 and built from there. After that, Hyperland decided it was going to freeze every time my computer came back from, you know, uh, from sleep, from hibernation. And I just didn't have the patience to, you know, report the bug or any of that stuff. I just, I was like, you know, I'm just done and I, I need, I need something different. It really has nothing to do with Hyperland. Hyperland does that if you're running off from like the bleeding fucking edge, it just breaks sometimes. It's just don't use the bleeding edge, even though in the video I, I said, use it. Don't actually use it. Don't listen to me. Never listen, never listen to me. <laughs> Anyways, so I... Decided because so for the longest time over the course of like the last four or five months, Qtile has been broken on my, my system, like really broken for a while, like it would crash all the time. And then when I could get it, it to run for whatever reason, one of the bars would like go completely invisible. So like I have three bars on each one on each of my monitors and one of them would go invisible. So I was like, you want? I'm going to finally fix Qtile because Qtile is my favorite window manager, like by far. So I spent probably close to 24 hours over the course of two days fixing Qtile and I'm finally at the point where it works like the bars are showing up everything looks the way that I want it to work and it's really uh, I remember now why I really like Qtile it's really very very good I, I also because I'm much more into Python than Haskell I can safely say that if there's something that I want to do in Qtile I will know how to do it and that makes me happy. I could not say the same with, with Xmonad. Like, I learned a lot of Haskell during my time using Xmonad, but not enough to know that I could safely make a change if I needed to make a change. So, back on Qtile, and uh, fairly happy with it. Yeah. So, yeah, I do... <laughs> You do all, you're putting together something for, I mean, obviously you're using a lot of all the stuff for next to yourself, but you're also being very public about it. And, you know, like everybody can use my flake and, you know, go use my setup and we're creating all these really cool, awesome bar setups and all this stuff. Matt, I'm just racing. <laughs> just doing what I do. I'm just racing. That's what I do. You know, I'm, I'm not going to do anything for you fools. <laughs> Just, 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 just for me. Uh, I, There's something my, to be said for doing it for yourself. You know, my, my dot just files. Just having fun doing it for you. <laughs> my dot files are a effing mess, man. They're so, so bad. I, one of these days, I'll go through and do like a spring cleaning. I got like four or five different polybar configurations in there. There's now there's two Q tile configurations. One of them is broken, but it's still there. <laughs> Like, I don't want to get rid of it, you know? So I'm going to have to, like, create, a, like, a folder or something like that for really old dot files that I no longer need. You can shove all that stuff in there. Like, there's, there's like, a Herbst Luft config file in my dot files. I think I used it exactly one time. No clue what's in there. Probably doesn't run anymore. So that will have to be fixed. But they'll, they'll come 
someday when I want to do some spring cleaning, but it hasn't yet. Yeah. It's a mess. Also, you do all this documentation stuff. <laughs> None of my stuff is documented. <laughs> the only reason they have readmes is because you can't create a repository without a readme. <laughs> That's the only reason they have one. So... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's 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 the that's the documentation for my stuff. <laughs> it's never gonna happen. All right. Anyways, well, I so won't that... lie. It's a lot of time spent in documentation, so I get not doing it too. It's much easier not to do it. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's our week in open source. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So let's go ahead and move on to the main topic. So what? So this topic. Let me see if I can actually find this. Where's my mouse? Um, so this topic came from our suggestion box on the Discord. So if you want to leave us a, a topic that you would like us to talk about, we have a whole bunch of stuff there. They're voted on. We don't always take the one that's been voted on the most. This one actually has a grand total of four thumbs down. So that's why I chose it. I was like, I figure if people don't like it, there's a good reason to choose it. So this one came from, let me see if I can actually find it. Of course, I'm not going to be able to find it. Let me actually right here. It's, it's right here. So it's they asked us to imagine if the Arch and Debian developers would join forces and merge the two operating systems. This was this came from Pi and the Discord. Uh, I broadened that a little bit to the to the idea. If we take if we were to want to create the perfect Linux distribution and we could take parts from every Linux distribution that exists or has ever existed, what would that distribution look like for the two of us if we were just doing it for the two of us? And what would it look like if we were to do it for public consumption? Uh, so I, I, I think that those probably would be two different things, but I don't know if that's true. Maybe maybe they'll be exactly the same. So um, I don't I don't really have a plan for how we're, how we should go about doing this, but uh, why, why don't we... <laughs> We just kind of wing it like we normally do. What like would you? It. What would you say? All right, let, let, actually, we can we can just kind of split this in. So, first off, let's start off the, at the base level. Obviously, we're using the Linux kernel. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, are we going to to succumb to Jake pressure and use a custom kernel, or are we just going to use the default kernel? I think I think for this perfect distro there needs to be some level of choice in the kernel. So like I say, it comes with the Zen kernel by default, and then we have the regular fallback and then like one other one. So, okay. So that would branch out, branch out to, we probably just use regular, would we use grub or system deboot to make the, to, cause we, we, I just imagine going into like a text based, like, Tui thing to select a freaking kernel. I want something fancy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, want, I want something fancy to select a kernel. So, but I, th I think I agree with you. I don't know if uh, I don't, I've never used the Zen kernel. I don't know much about it. Well, wait, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We may be getting ahead of ourselves even here. What are we going to use for the live environment for the install? Can we both agree that we should just, just package a desktop environment that works everywhere? Well, like just, I just mean, for the installer or should, I guess, or should I guess, we go in curses? I, 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 <laughs> well, we could just do, go full on void Linux, right? Just you, you get a desktop environment, but you still have to open up the Ancurses installer to install. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and of course, I don't, I don't know that we go that far. We're, we're not going to select the groups that you need to be in. We're going to let you select the groups because, of course, everyone knows exactly what groups you're supposed to be a part yeah. of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so I think okay, so. I'm more of a of a KDE guy, so if we were to create this live ISO, I would say put KDE on there. But that makes that's gonna. My make only the, argument against that is SDDM is known to cause issues on some machines just because the live ISO will not load because SDDM gives a black screen. Can you build Plasma without SDDM actually being there? I don't know. Well, like I know you, I know you can build it with other display managers because you know you can use LightDM with Plasma if you wanted to, but I don't, I don't know either. I don't know the I don't know the answer to that question. Josh, where the Linux hell are Tech you? Geek <laughs> said yeah. So let, let's assume we can and SDDM doesn't cause problems. I'm fine with going KDE for the live install. Like either that or we can hire Steve 
to do our rice for XFC. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he loves XFC so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right, so... Uh, I don't know. All right, you're right. We, we jumped into the kernel a little bit too soon. What are we going to do for the installer? Do we use stock calamares? Do we go something custom? Do we do end curses? Are we like, screw it, if you want to use our distro you have to go full on gen 2 yeah <laughs> no let, let, like let's just let's just say we go heavily themed calamaris yeah i think i agree with that it's not my favorite installer of all time but it's the most customizable and it allows you to do you know, so much stuff and everyone knows how to use it right like every everyone who's installed linux knows exactly what you know, calamari's is and and how to use it. So, so in, installation is done. Let's go back to the kernel just for a second. N now that we're we've installed something that doesn't have a kernel. <laughs> 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 so you said you tell me what the benefits of using using the Zen kernel is. There is minimal improvements over using minimal but noticeable improvements over using the base like default Linux kernel with Zen on most desktop and some laptop configurations. So, and also Zen is not normally likely. I've never really had an issue come from using the Zen kernel. So. Is the Zen kernel the one that Garuda uses? Is that? I believe so. Okay. Because there's, the problem with kernels is that they're kind of like fads. They go in and out of, popularity so you know xan mod was there for a little while and then licorix or whatever it's called and well xan mod is still around well i know they're also still around but you, you know what i mean like they, they're coming in and out of the limelight um yeah popularity which, yeah. popularity so i'm okay with using a kernel that i've never used before why the hell not <laughs> but i th <laughs> i think i think you're right that we should include the default kernel as like a backup and why the hell not let's just go throw in the lts kernel just in case so if you yeah. want if you wanted to have the you know the the LTS kernel and, and you go full on Debian you probably could. So there's the kernel. Now do we here's the question. System D or no system D? I would say just for ease of use system D. But if we wanted to get a pat on the back from people maybe we throw run it in it. So yeah, instead, we could go some some. We could go partially the way like MX Linux has gone, where they run a, an alternative init system as their default, and then they have systemd as a backup that you can boot into from the boot menu. So we could go something like that, but that that's going to increase complexity because if we use a non-standard init system we're of course going to have to include tools to do things like run cron jobs to do things like that so no. um, now a lot of that stuff can be pulled from you know other developers who have done that already but you know it's something to think about well what uh, uh so, i mean linux tech keeps linux tech geek keeps throwing out open rc that may, that may be a good option. We could go open RC. Well, I mean, if we go, <laughs> the thing is, if we say, well, all right, we're not doing system D, so we're going to choose a different init system. Then the question becomes, whose favorite init system are we going to use? <laughs> because, yes. you know, oh, you know, there's a lot of people who like run it. There's a lot of people like open RC. You know what? Screw it. Let's just go sys v init, you know? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's ask the base, the base question that should be the fundamental defining factor in this do you care well i don't care on install but i think no, no, no. do you care about your init system at all assuming you know which commands to run do you care personally yeah i do okay which one do you prefer system d <laughs> well then let's go with system d then because i don't give a shit <laughs> all of them are fine with me well it's just as long e as every once in a while you want to start up a service like for example if you're on hyperland and you have portal problems restarting the portal is you know lickety split with system d i'd have no clue how to do it with run it or open rc 
you can do it. I just don't know how to do it. So I know the commands for systemd. So okay, so systemd it is. We just pissed up, pissed off some people, but that's okay. <laughs> yep. Totally hey, you good. Wanna, it's our distro. Screw you. Go make your own. <laughs> 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 anyway, so we got we got our init system. And then that oh, kind bootloader. Yeah, you know, a bootloader. So we we went with systemd. So we could use systemd boot the um, systemd boot, or we could use grub too. Or we could go full on nerd and go refined, but that would require UEFI. Yeah, and I don't know. Well, I don't know. Do we require UEFI? I mean, in this day and age, I think don't. Well, I mean, most district like doesn't. How, wait, how about this? How about this? For this conversation, we actually like actually poll chat. This this is one of those questions that makes sense to ask chat. How many of them use UFI? All right, we're gonna, and then that can determine what we do. All right, we're gonna put a poll in the chat. Start poll. Uh, let's see here. Do you use UEFI? Yes or no? And I don't think there needs to be a third option. <laughs> There's, like it's either a yes yeah. or no question. Okay, start poll. Yeah. All right. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, no. maybe you, you probably could have thrown a maybe in there. But like, <laughs> I don't know. Usually, when I do polls, I do a third option is like, yeah, I get to vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone says S six. See, that's the problem with going with a custom init system, is that everyone has their favorite. I mean, yeah. what we could do, and this is stupid, and we could go full on Arco Linux, okay? You get to choose everything right from the installer, including the init system, the bootloader, which kernel you're going to use, your your CPU code, your, all your codecs, everything. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so right now it's looking like it's an 80-20 or close to about there with people using it and not using it. So the question is, is do we want to alienate that 20% with UFI only? Well, okay. So we're using the Zen kernel as default. Let me ask you this question. Cause I've never used the Zen kernel before. How does that work on older hardware? Like really old should hardware. should be Cause, fine. Cause the I mean, you probably won't get nearly as many benefits from it, but yeah, it should work fine. Or it may even give you a better performance. Just kind of depends on the system. The vast majority of those people who answered no probably use it on older hardware that doesn't either support UEFI well or it's just easier on those machines to use legacy BIOS. <laughs> Hip dad out in there. Arco. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. Viva Open BSD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're using the Linux kernel, okay? We're not going to get none of this BSD shit. <laughs> but all right. So, with that poll being said, I think we should probably not use Refine. But I am down with going System D boot only because that means that's not a separate application. It's, I mean, it's just slimmer. It keeps everything cleaner. And System D boot is not, not a really hard thing to configure. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question. I, you might not know the answer to this question. So we'll we'll answer, see if anybody in the chat has the question has the answer. Can you use Snapper snapshot integration with System Deboot? Because I swear to God, if this distro does not have ButterFS, I'm choking a bitch. <laughs> Just <laughs> I, I I will riot if it doesn't have ButterFS. <laughs> well. Uh... I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't know, but I would believe so. Well, I, I know it's really easy with Grub. Like, I know it's yeah. really easy with Grub. I mean, you should Grub. just be able to have it create entries and it'd be fine. So, yeah. DW says yes. I've never tried because I've never used System Deboot. Open, OpenSUSE uses Grub, so. I mean, DW would know, so. Yeah, I don't. I because I don't know. Okay, so I'm okay if if we can, then we can go ahead and use System Deboot. <laughs> well, that makes it easy. So, what's the next thing past bootloader we got to decide? Well, okay, so and it's really small, but do we use Plymouth to make it pretty, or do we just leave a scrolling line of text? No, we use Plymouth. Okay, good. All right, I agree. Wait, hold on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to be keeping notes as we go. I'm going to open up a little file. 
don't don't accidentally hit the recording button. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for the kernel, we're using Zen. The Zen kernel, System D boot, or System D, and System D boot. Calamari's for installer. Yes, yeah, so it'd be a perfect opportunity for a scratch pads dubs. That's the, that's exactly true. We're using a KDE live environment. Mm -hmm. What else have we said? We're going to use Plymouth and we're going to use, so we, we did bootloader. You might as well just write down ButterFS for the file system because yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm accepting not, no other. I'm not, I'm not really going to fight you there. I think ButterFS is a great file system. So M maybe, although maybe. I do think that we should have something that generates snapper like, you know, snapshots like options and stuff but for the system configuration when it changes like nix os does but you know whatever we'll get to that <laughs> we're about to get into the contentious part <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. Doing. okay because tyler's perfect distribution is like yeah why don't you just use nix <laughs> like why, why, <laughs> why are we doing this just use nix it's the best distro <laughs> i'm fighting every urge not <laughs> to say that it's it, it's theoretical we don't have to choose our because if i were like, just use open Sousa, it does the best all right pecan says thank you for the five dollars he says off topic for a second but you said you tried tkg and Sousa, and it gives you issues give liquids a, liquids a try see my issue with it is that um I had to have Jake and friends build it for me because I didn't do I didn't do any of the work myself because I, <laughs> I I didn't see the benefit of it. <laughs> but I'm trying to be persuaded towards a custom kernel, and Jake and friends are trying to get me to that point. I'm just not there yet. But I would happily give the Licrix thing a try. And the reason why I'm so happy to give alternate kernels a try is because I'm <laughs> I use ButterFS, and it's so easy to just to roll back when uh, you know I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Butterfest Assistant is good. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you can't get it for OpenSUSE. I cannot get it to install. But that's beside the point. <laughs> Anyways, so let's go ahead then and move on to the big stuff. So we've man we we've installed it. We got it on a Butterfest system. You know, we've we've we can just assume that we've set up the appropriate sub volumes and all that stuff along the way. We have system D running. We have system D boot. It's got us into the boot. We, we booted into Plymouth. It's, it's loaded into the display manager. What display manager are we going to use? Now, are we going to use a display manager? So are we well, just going to... Well, wait, hold on. Before we define that, we should go ahead and say, what shell are we running? Oh, bash. I think we just stick with bash. Yeah. You think? But we're uh, j j just so we're clear, we're not going to make it ZSH. No, I use, I use bash on my, my system, so I'm okay with bash. I, I think that's a well a, a good default to to have. I literally wrote started writing ZSH. Do you want do you want to fight for no, ZSH? No, I'm fine with bash, but I <laughs> you said bash, we agreed on bash and I started writing out ZSH. Yeah. Well, okay, so the, I, sw I switched back to Bash probably about six months ago because I discovered something called BLE.SH. Basically, it just, Blesh, yeah. Yeah, it just gives Bash all the features of ZSH, and it's awesome. Like, even if like if you CD into downloads and are dyslexic like, like me and can't spell downloads, and I misspell downloads all the time, it just, it just knows what you're, you're doing. It's awesome. You don't even need, you don't need ZSH. Just use Bash. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Bash is good. So Display Manager then, right? What somebody said, Lie. I don't think we're gonna use Lie. I, I, I like Lie, but it has so many problems with Wayland. I, I, I guess. The, I guess before we can answer the Display Manager question, are we doing a Wayland only, or are we going to include XOR? You know, I say Wayland only. O Wayland only. Okay, so uh, and that branches off into the question: What's going to be our default environment is it going to be a desktop environment or are we going to say screw that and do a compositor i mean um, you know me dude it has to be <laughs> hyperland on my end has to be like there's literally nothing better and just so you know i have loved using scratch pads i am now a hardcore scratch pad user and thank you very much for getting me into it it's very nice Oh, they're awesome. I, I, <laughs> scratch heads are awesome. My problem with Hyperland is that it is so 
quickly developed to the point where you could build it every single day and, you know, have the problems. <laughs> could we agree that we should lock the version for it? I mean, if we're going to use it, we have to. Like, we, there's no way we can use the Git version on a... I agree. Okay. I, I, I think, <laughs> unfortunately... If we were really distro maintainers, I understand now why they have so many decisions to make because we, at this point here, we have to choose display manager, what the environment's going to be, and all of that kind of plays into what kind of distro we're going to want. Is this going to be a stable release distro where we release every like six months or something, or are we going to go full rolling release? Is it is it going to be based on something, or are we going to go full on OG distro? Uh, are we going to, you know, and that's going to play into what package manager we're going to be using. So we have some choices here, man. We got to make some choices. Yes. We, we were going kind of linearly in, linear, linearly in the boot, you know, order. I don't yeah. think we're going to be able to do that anymore. No, <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> not because at all. Because we can't, we can't boot into something until we know what type of distro it's going to be. So let, let's go ahead and then d decide rolling or static release. And and simultaneously decide, or at least at least alongside that, decide: Are we going to do this thing straight up from scratch, or are we basing it on another distro? Well, with the decisions we've already made, it's probably going to have to be custom, only because we're already pulling in custom kernels and crap. So why not just go fully custom anyway? See, <laughs> not based on anything. I don't want to do that kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> what I, well, I mean, we're not actually making it in the first I know, place. I know, I know, I know. I'm just... <laughs> Here's what I think, and this is going to, to be something. What would you say to making this based off Gentoo? Like, we'll make this based on Gentoo and do something very similar to what Redcore or Sisyph not Sisyphus, Calculate Linux, all those like Gentoo-based distros do, based on Gentoo, but have their own installer so it's easy to install. And we can have Emerge as a backup package manager, but we could also create our own package manager like Sisyphus, although we would definitely have to come up with a better effing name than Sisyphus. Well, no, I mean, for like, to me, I think that's a great idea. We could base it off of Gen 2, have Portage be our default package manager, and then for our AUR, because like, let's say like we keep our package for us, we don't want to maintain a shit ton of packages. So we have the default Gen 2 repositories where you can build packages from or get their binaries now from their binary repo. Or for anything that's not there or say you want a different binary, we include the Nix package manager as our like AUR implementation. So you've got all the packages there and, and you that can build would, out your system. <laughs> and that would get the Nix guys off my back. Because exactly. it's there. <laughs> all right. Exactly. I, I, I'm okay with I'm okay with that, except for the next thing messes around with your paths, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a Gen 2 base, and I'll put slash portage in here, and Nix as AUR like supplementation. <laughs> They're fighting in the in the chat about Arch because you should base it on Arch. Uh, if if we're gonna if we're, we want full control, Gen two almost has to be it, right? Because Arch doesn't it gives you mostly full control, but it's so much easier with use flags to literally build this thing exactly the way that we want it to, to be installed. Like if we don't want people to be able to install Xorg at all just by default negative x11 you're never going to install xorg yep. on this system without going in and messing around with my use flags <laughs> we, we, we can encrypt that thing so you can never see it you know, <laughs> you oh, know? i mean also i think a gen 2 base makes it easier for us in development and then in implementation if you don't like portage or you don't want to like have all that crazy customization and ever have to even deal with that you've got the nix package manager so you can get any packages you want and just never even have to deal with portage and use flags, masking, anything like that. You can completely avoid it all. Uh, Stan has a very good point in the chat. Do DistroBox just in case someone needs Arch or anything. Definitely going to have DistroBox installed by default. Yes, I'll go and, ahead and add that DistroBox. <laughs> and that way you can have your own containers running for whatever distro that you want because, you know, ours is going to be broken half the time. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, we should have. We wish, wish, wish. That's definitely happening. We're we're not actually going to to do a custom package manager, but we're going to alias emerge to Nuggy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna be Nuggy install. Yeah, that way you don't. Have, that way you you don't have to ever remember the flags for portage. You don't have to remember at world or any of that stuff. You just do nuggy install, nuggy search, whatever, and we can do all that stuff. <laughs> nuggy aliases for portage. I love it. Yeah, this is now we're gonna have to do this, dude. <laughs> 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 just to piss Matt off <laughs> uh, I, I would la I would I would still use it I swear to God because <laughs> that's just be fun uh, okay so we, we have our, our base our package manager uh, an awesome idea for a uh, 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 alias for package manager we, we we have to go back now to display manager then what are we going to use for the display manager can we still have to dis we still have to decide if are we, I guess are we going with Hyperland then as our default? Yes, and then maybe like maybe have I don't know maybe maybe actually instead of having it default to Hyperland have like either it or KDE be an option because I mean KDE Wayland's getting better. It's more of an op, more of a I wouldn't recommend like KDE to to somebody on Wayland right now but eventually i probably would so yeah i mean i say we could go with hyperland slash kde and like you just choose it on install which one you want yeah i think that's probably a good idea uh, uh it's really a freaking shame that xfc ha doesn't have their wayland thing in order yet because it is yes, it, it, it i I'm not lying. That's actually what I was going to say first, but then I remembered they're only Xorg. Yeah, it's only Xorg only. We we can't we can't say we're using a use flag to get rid of Xorg and then allow XFC. It's just well. How about this? Let, let let's put it as Hyperland XFC, knowing that this distro is ethereal and probably by the time it would ever be implemented, XFC would support Wayland. Yeah, and then when Wayland comes for XFC, we can just then say add it in. Yeah, no XORG. We'll just get rid of XORG then. So, yeah. so I'll put Hyperland, and then slash XFC. <laughs> it's like the the weirdest pairing ever. We have the the fastest developed Wayland compositor in the history of the world, and we have the slowest desktop environment ever developed in the history of the world, and we're installing them both side by side. <laughs> <laughs> hey, best of both worlds, man. You, you get into what you want. That's awesome. <laughs> so for the login manager, if we're going to go with these two, I mean, we could obviously, I mean, we have options, but I think SDDM is probably going to be the best one since it works well with Hyperland and it works well with pretty much anything. Well, we, we can eliminate quite a few of them. So we can eliminate lie because it doesn't work with Hyperland very well or at all, as far as I know. Uh, it, can, it does work with Hyperland, but not well. Okay. It doesn't work with... Uh, Light DM does not work well with Wayland like 0% of the time. <laughs> like, it's so bad. Yeah. Is Light DM even still even freaking still developed? Like, I don't even know. I really don't know, to be honest. Like, like, seriously, just use a, a modern window ma or display manager. So those two can go away. GDM is so freaking tied to GNOME. I don't even think it on... Probably on... on on Gen 2 would be fine, but like if you install GDM on like OpenSUSE and Fedora, half of the time it comes with GNOME right alongside it. Like you, <laughs> like so. I, I think that GDM. So I think that SDDM. You're right. Is probably the best option. My problem with SDDM is that it is you know SDDM, and it does yes. S SDDM things. As somebody who uses it now, yes, it is the most annoying, but probably the best display manager out there, and it kills me. Yeah, like I've actually, it's actually been okay for me, surprisingly, recently. Because, and I say surprisingly because I do switch back and forth between Wayland and Xorg quite a bit, and it does a fairly good job of that. So I think that, yeah, that would be a good option because we're installing both at this point. All right, so SDDM is the login manager. So Nuntrix asks, why do some login managers not work well with Wayland? The answer to that question is because the login managers themselves usually have to have Wayland support built in. And like Light DM, 
doesn't really, as far as I know. I mean, it, it does, I think, will launch if all you have is Wayland, but I don't think it will launch into anything. Um, SDDM seems to have the, SDDM and GDM have the best Wayland support, uh, as far as I can tell. Although, there was a point where on GDM you could have Xorg support or Wayland support, you could not have both. I don't know if that's still the case or not. It's not, but it was. That'd be that'd be the greatest thing. Every time you wanted to switch back and forth between XFC and Hyperland, you had to go into the GDM configuration file and switch it switch it out there. That's just the <laughs> that's that's great. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's Display Manager. Now we're now we're booted in, and we're T Tyler is going to do the ricing for Hyperland. He's got that shit taken care of. I'm, I I was is there so here's my knowledge of Nix shining through. You could is there a way you could use your flake using the Nix package manager on this or do you are you going to no. do it all from the start? I didn't think so. But <laughs> I was just saying if flakes are so good, why can't I use them on open Sousa is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to do the ricing for Hyperland and I will do the ricing for XFCE cuz I'm awesome at it. And we'll, we'll get some good good CSS there. We'll have a floating bar. It's going to be awesome. So we, we've taken care of the ricing between the two of us. He, he'll be responsible for maintaining everything that goes along with Hyperland. And in, in the best division of labor ever, I get XFCE, which never updates. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the best thing ever. Okay. <laughs> Tyler says, wait a minute. I didn't agree to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely taking on more work than I should, but all right, all right. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I question. Uh, so we have Portage, we have Nix. Do we need to enable something like Flatpak support? Probably not out of the gate, but you know, obviously you can install and use Flatpaks, but we just don't configure it for you out of the gate. Well, because I, I think if we if we have Nix. We don't really need to have flat pack because you know you're gonna have a lot of of, of overlap there, or or you, you could run it like I would and just always use <laughs> everything from the Gen two repositories and never touch Nix ever, just because you're scared of it. Okay, just a little scared of it. It's all right. Uh, we're not installing snaps. That wasn't even an option. Okay, they're not. <laughs> get your loopback devices out of my Gen two. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. All uh, right. So. Uh, graphical package manager what we using because we need one we need we need this we need an app store shite yeah i have no idea dude i don't like the kde one that's for sure discover i mean yeah i'm not a big <laughs> fan of discover so xfc is gtk based so we could choose something like gnome software or the pop store which is based on the elementary thing which i uh, this kind of gives me the X, but whatever. So both of those are options. We could, we could build our own. I think we might have to dude, because it's, it's either the pop OS one or custom. Okay. So if we're going to do custom, then we'll be able to pull from both the gen two repositories and do a front end for the Nick store. Yep. Package, package search mechanism. And it just put them, all right in there and you can choose from the top where you want to install your thing from and then we could build it in so that if you do install flat pack or snaps first off if you install snaps on my brand new shiny distro i'm going to there's gonna be like a pop-up every five seconds saying are you sure like no 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 here's the best thing if you if you install snaps on this distro Every five seconds, Clippy is going to come up from the side and say, did you really mean to install snaps? Would you like me to uninstall snaps for you? <laughs> well, oh, yeah. Yeah, we could definitely have our store to run a check to see if Flatpak is installed. If it is, then it checks to see if the Flathub, like a Flathub service has been ran to um, to ensure a Flathub is added. If, if it hasn't been, then we run it and keep, like just enable it. And so that way, like, there's never not a time when the user doesn't have FlatHub ready. And then then we can pull in everything from FlatHub and display it in there. Like, this is, I th I, this is actually a app store that I want to see actually happen. <laughs> like, yeah. wh why is this not actually a thing that your app store just 
goes out and searches for what's available. Like if it has, you know, uh, if it's running Pac-Man, it can it can get all the re large repositories. It can also search if you have Flatpak installed or Snaps or Nix. If it has, if you have those things installed, it can then, you know, put those things all right in the store, and you can make the choice. It's not even that complicated because it would all happen in the background. The user needs nothing other than just to have those things installed. Oh man. So custom app store with portage. I am uh, so Nix sad right now. And a flat this, this distro is never going to exist and I want to use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One, one of us is going to really need to seriously learn how to code just to, just to let you know that. <laughs> like I got a little bit of Python, but we're not going to want to build everything in Python because that's slower than shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's gonna be uh, and we gotta. <laughs> I can just see DT coming in the chat right now. Everything's got to be built in Haskell. <laughs> 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 okay, obviously we're 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 installing Vim by default, and we're putting in a use flag that prevents people from installing Emacs. <laughs> oh, I love this Vim use flag against. Emacs, this is happening. <laughs> you this can't, is happening. You can't install. If you Emacs. want Emacs, use Flatpak Emacs. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a Flatpak of Emacs. <laughs> that actually exists? probably not. But they're probably I, actually I'm, no. I'll take it back. There probably is. I'm going to look. <laughs> I gotta go look. All right, uh, let's see. We, you guys can come look for me. Oh, you guys can't see that because I don't have the right thing. Otherwise, I'd. I'll fix that later. There is actually there's a flat pack of Emacs. There actually is. <laughs> oh god, that's awesome. If you want to use Emacs on our distro, you guys have to use the flat pack. It'd be more hilarious if we if we had a funnel that when you try to do flat pack install Emacs, it installed snaps for you just just make you suffer. <laughs> oh no! What we could do is also add an alias that remaps like Nix for Emacs. Like if you try to install Emacs using Nix, it it just is an alias, and it echoes out, why are you trying to do this? Like, demeans the user for trying to install Emacs. Uh, it, it prints out, like, the the like the help, the help line for people who are, are mentally depressed. Like, <laughs> oh, oh we just pissed off everyone who uses Emacs. <laughs> Hey, well, we, I mean, come on, man. What? Uh, can we have a little fun with our distro? Why Ty not? T Tyler's crying. Matt's cheeks hurt from laughing so hard. <laughs> that's the be that's the best thing ever. Uh <laughs> so, all right, we got them. Should we add a GUI text editor? Like, for me, only because I know this would upset some people and it would make me extraordinarily happy. Uh, for our GUI text editor, could we make it Neovide? And have like our like NeoVim config that's like similar to our nice Vim configuration. I'm okay with that. We can actually make NeoVim in place of Vim if you wanted to. That'd be okay. All right. Yeah, I'll put NeoVide and in Vim. We're also uninstalling Nano. <laughs> oh, oh yes. I'll also have that. Um, Nuke Nano from Orbit. You're the greatest sister ever. The only way you can use this is if you know how to get out of Vim. <laughs> <laughs> we, we so we so should have made the, instead of using the calamari's installer just created a configuration file that launches instantaneously into vim and in order to use it you have to know how to get out <laughs> it would be good we should do that, I like that. We, we could provide a text <laughs> i mean it's just it's kind of a shame that our our distro here doesn't have a config file to install right <laughs> Yeah. I, I mean, actually, what we could do is, like, after you go through and successfully install the system with the Calamaris installer, it triggers an exit of, of the entire graphical, like, session. And then once it gets to TTY, it immediately opens up Vim and then just sits there. Like, it, like, it opens up a file that, like, to reboot, exit this. <laughs> and then just hangs there. It's, it's like a, um, it's like a, an intelligence test or whatever. In order to, in order to actually use the distro, you have to know how to exit Vim. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, Carlos, that's just cruel. That's just so bad. <laughs> that's so mean. Nano alias RMRF. 
<laughs> so if somebody uses nano that they accidentally nuke their system <laughs> yeah it's so mean uh, we we really don't care what text editor you use but it's so much fun to make fun of people who use other just other text editors that we couldn't help ourselves so we just don't cancel us you can use emacs just as long as it's the flat yeah, we don't care it doesn't matter <laughs> as long it's as just <laughs> just josh having fun so, so uh here's we the, here's got the, neo oh wait go ahead go, i was just, I, I got i got stuck up on thought because emacs has a terminal you know, like terminal user interface that you can use for emacs does if you install the flatpak version of emacs do you get the tui i mean because flatpaks don't run in the terminal probably not i wouldn't assume so this is the best thing ever uh, <laughs> okay. you have 10 seconds to exit or it deletes the install <laughs> and you have to start over again you gotta know the colon wq man all right <laughs> that's the greatest thing ever that's good Okay, uh, um, let's see. So what else do we got left to do? So uh, default browser, Firefox, probably. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, would, a hard one. I would fight for Vivaldi, but it's not for everybody. Let's see. So, so Why not both? <laughs> you just do, you, there was a distro that I tried not too long ago that literally had every browser installed. Like Every browser installed. It had Conquer and Pale Moon and like, <laughs> oh, we're not going that far. We'll just do Firefox and Vivaldi because at, at the very least, a lot of people who do web development need two different rendering engines to test against. So there we go. This is going to take forever to install because we're not using binaries. <laughs> we got to compile everything. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes. The, the, no, the we force is... everyone to compile everything. <laughs> We're going to have to check to see if, by using SDDM, if that pulls down Plasma. Because if it pulls down all the Plasma dependencies along with SDDM, which it probably does, <laughs> it's just going to take four or five days to actually get in there. <laughs> oh, God. Now we won't do that. <laughs> we won't go that far today. <laughs> Microsoft Edge pre-installed. No, no, no. I don't think we've got anything else to do. If I'm being honest, no, I think we're, I think we're, I think we're there. We've riced everything. We got the, the primary applications. Because what else do you need other than a browser and Vim? I mean, seriously. Exactly. I mean, those we're, are the only two. Things. We're not installing a freaking Office Suite. No, <laughs> gross. We did install an operating system. It's or our, our Office no, Suite. No. It's called Vim. <laughs> no, well, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I do my PowerPoints in Vim. <laughs> you should definitely should. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah okay so <laughs> raise the hands who's using the distro i'm using the damn distro i want i want to use this i don't know if i'm going to stick on it for very long but it's definitely good i want to uh, the the favorite thing we created was the thing we created from scratch was the was the app store that just sounds fantastic and something that should really freaking exist but uh, <laughs> it's I, this, this, when, when I came, when, when I transformed the topic that was suggested into this, I thought we would take it more seriously, but I'm glad that we didn't. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. it turned out this because this was way more fun. Some people are saying file browser and terminal, but I mean, well, okay. Off the top of your head, what terminal are we going to use? Kitty. Thank you. I like it. As someone who's using West term right now, I'm about to just kill this thing. I do not like it right now. I'm about to switch back. File manager is going to be a problem because I want to fight for Crusader, but if we do do Crusader, oh my goodness, that thing is going to take forever to compile. <laughs> yeah. So what about Thunar? We're installing XFC anyway, so Thunar is going to come be installed. So we might as well just use Thunar. Yeah. It's already there because I don't think you. And can I mean that's what I use on Hyperland. It's nice. Yeah, it's good. Fine. It's it, it, rem it remembers your position has dual pane. I I I'm behind Thunar. No, we can't install Nemo because Nemo comes with with Cinnamon already, and we don't want to have to compile something else. We're, we we've already compiled for days. <laughs> we don't want to add more compile time. Yeah, so Thunar is a good option. I don't. I mean, those. I think that's all you need, right? You, if you need anything else, you can install that stuff. You know, on your own. I think the best part about this distro is that it's not going to come overly bloated with everything, even though we did, you know, make some choices that were kind of bloated, like installing two different, you know, environments. 
So you you Darth tested the Emacs flat pack and it, it he says it does ship the TUI. Interesting. Thunar theming is fine. You're just gonna have to do the GTK stuff. It could, it, it could be worse. It could be completely GTK too. <laughs> we, we 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 could go full Midnight Commander or uh, Double oh. Commander. I guess. Nah. <laughs> All right. That we could though. <laughs> just mess with people. <laughs> We've done it enough. <laughs> Still, the best the the best part is the Emacs use flag. <laughs> 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 all right that's it for this one we're gonna go ahead and move on to the nuggies of the week i hope you guys enjoyed that because that was way fun like i just we needed a good laugh and that that was it so uh, that, that was that was more fun than i expected it to be and i'm glad that we did it so let's go ahead and move on to the nuggies of the week tyler your nuggie of the week uh my nuggie of the week i actually totally forgot oh yeah w log out I've been using it. I'll go ahead and show my screen, but I've got it set up with like a little power button and there's two buttons over here. I haven't really configured yet, but it, it's really nice. Like it's really nice. I will not accidentally press a button. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. But, oh, yeah. We're not going to do that today, but yeah, it, it, it's just a really nice menu. Really, to be honest, it's it's just simple. It's nice. <laughs> Darth says the terminal should be X term with the, with default theme and font. Uh, I was gonna say URXVT, <laughs> you know, just URXVT, just <laughs> the best with people. Oh man, no. no. Ew. <laughs> Let's not. And, and the developer man, we don't need B top or anything like that. We have top. Top is good. Top should be good enough for anybody. <laughs> I mean, as someone who uses B top, I. I do disagree, but not too much. <laughs> Top's fine. We ended up making the, the distro that we torture people the most, not the best one. <laughs> yeah, what did you expect, people? <laughs> All right. That was a good nugget of the week, Tyler. Mine is just very simply Qtile. It's the best window manager. If you're going to use Xorg, Qtile is the best one. Just seriously, it's the best one. You can do everything you want to do with Qtile that you can do with any other Xorg window manager. It's fantastic. Uh, I will say that it's not the most stable thing in the world, but you know, who's counting these things, right? It doesn't, stability is overrated. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Qtile is, is mine. I, I'm very, very happy. I still have some, I have this really weird thing where, so I use the same group box widget for all three bars. So they should all be exactly the same, like exactly the same. And yet, for whatever reason, the theming on the bar on my main machine, actually, I, I, I haven't switched the camera back, but you guys can't see it anyways. The, the, the theming on my main machine or my main monitor is different from the other two in, in the group box. I have no clue why. It's really weird because they use the exact same widget. It's all done through a, 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 a group box variable. So I don't know. It's, it's very weird. And that's going to be something that I'm going to have to suss out because it's just very, it, it's driving me nuts because it looks different here. And then I look over here and oh, it's different. And I, I don't understand why. So that, that's probably what I'll be spending my evening doing other than making a video, which is what I should be doing. <laughs> there's nothing. There's Rice. Rice. Yeah, Rice. B-dubs, <laughs> B-dubs, there's nothing wrong with Qtile. And the fact that you think that it's yuck is offensive in the extreme. Like in the extreme. Mm-hmm. Are you going to take him to court now? I'm suing him. I, I've decided Good. that we're, we're we're you should. We are now sworn enemies, and <laughs> um, we can no longer be friends. Okay, uh, that 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 is it for this podcast. Uh, it was a one. I had just so much fun. Uh, just it was amazing. Actually, towards the end there, I, I I said it, but you were you were going on. I actually kind of forgot we were doing the podcast and weren't just here talking <laughs> doing this. So it was so much fun. Anyways, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in any number of ways. You can, the best way is to head on over to the website, which is at the linuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of things which are awesome, including past blog posts. Also, every episode we've ever done, except for the first three, which are in the Disney vault and are never coming back out. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 honestly, they're they're lost to, to time. I don't know where those three are. I have no actually no clue to be honest with you. But anyways, all the episodes previous of the last eight seasons are all there if you want to you know binge them. 
it's uh, it would be a good you know afternoon's worth of content there for you probably because there, there's like 140 some episodes which which is awesome. Anyways, you can also find Tyler who makes YouTube videos on uh, on the YouTube at youtubecom G. Especially if you're into Nix, head on over there, check out his his YouTube channel. Check out his Discord, which is going to be linked in the video description and on the website as well. Um, because if if you're in, especially if you're in your next, that's where 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 it's at. And you know, every time someone has a question on next and can't get solved in my server, I just like head on over to Tyler's server. He's he's got the goods on next. Anyways, please uh, do. Yeah, yeah, trying to help out everybody on my server who needs some help. So he's the yep. Nick. He's the next guy. I I am not the next guy. <laughs> 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 he's the next guy i'm not the next guy uh, you know you don't need to want to ask me for opinions on nicks anyways you can also find all of this stuff including the link to my discord server to tyler's discord server my mastodon i don't think i have tyler's link to his mastodon on there but we have all sorts of other stuff for contact information you can find that at, at the linuxcast.org slash contact make sure you head on over to the youtube youtube.com slash the linuxcast and subscribe because we do record this live every saturday at three o'clock p.m eastern time and uh, we as you can tell today we have a wonderful time so join us if you don't want to watch us live though the podcast does come out in recorded form on monday evenings and uh, it's awesome so uh, you can listen us listen to us on your favorite podcatcher or catch us uh, on video on youtube whichever way you want to do it or both. There's no reason why you can't listen to the episode twice, once on video, once in audio form, just in case you miss something. It's both there. Make sure you leave a review. Also, thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Patreon.com slash Linuxcast is where you'll go if you want to support me. Thanks to everybody who does do that already. You could also thank you if you support me on YouTube as well. Uh, I, I don't always forget the YouTube guys, but uh, when I do remember, thank you for supporting there, me there as well. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Again, live every Saturday between 3 o'clock and 5 or so. Today, we actually, this was like a speed run. Uh, we did go an hour, but we, we started earlier, and we're ending earlier, and it's awesome. It was a fantastic podcast, so uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.